Okay, so uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce a Pixel Privacy uh, task this year, and indeed uh, this is uh, uh, one of uh, the nascent tasks, we can, we can call it. And uh, so I'm going to explain to you uh, what we're trying to achieve here. And, and in order to do that, I'm going to go back and give you some medieval history. Uh, okay, so uh, um, in, in 2010, uh, in medieval, we started a task called the placing task. And basically, the goal of this task was giving a multimedia item and its associated metadata uh, predict where in that world that, that um, multimedia item was captured, where the picture was taken, predict a geolocation. And the data, and image, the data are images and videos, so social multimedia, and it was drawn from Flickr. So basically, this task ran uh, from 2010 to 2015. And uh, you can see here, these numbers are gradually increasing each year. So this indicates that uh, the task organizers each year are ramped up the amount of um, training data and test data. That's what you're looking at here. Uh, and this list also summarizes sort of the, what was the insights that we gained each year. So in the first year, we expanded from images to video. And we found out that language modeling works well, and also that the ID of the user uploading to Flickr was a, a key indicator. Uh, then we moved on to using audio, granularity of regions, motion features, user models, two-stage approaches. In 2013, we figured, OK, wait a minute. Maybe we want to do this without the uploader ID signal. So we em eliminated that. We worked on confidence prediction retrieval and retrieval approaches. In 2014, the YFCC 100M data uh, uh, data set wa was published. So basically, the, the work in medieval kind of um, fed into Yahoo actually publishing this data set, and probably uh, many of you are, are actually using that. OK, so that occurred in 2014. A graph approaches again, and we found out that external resources weren't helping us anymore. And finally, in 2015, um, we could get 8% uh, correct geolocations with using only visual features and 27% correct um, using multimodal features. Okay, and we feel felt that it plateaued there, and the task said, okay, we're, we have finished, and we've come to an end. But that wasn't the real, real end of things because... Um, we also started kind of worrying about the implications of what we did. Uh, so basically at the end of the run, then uh, we published this book chapter looking back on the whole task. Um, these are some of the authors of that book chapter. I put these pictures up here to show you just how many people it takes um, to, to run a task. Uh, so, and here you see um, Bart Tommy in the middle, and uh, I think maybe he's tuning in remotely now. We are hoping uh, he's on the community council now, and these are the other people um, you recognize, Claudia Half and Gerald Freeland and some of the others who really contributed to that, that six years of placing. Okay, so then... <coughs> So we plateaued and placing finished, but we still continue to worry a bit about this because look at what's happening here. This guy, he's on vacation with his son. Um, he uploads this uh, image to Flickr. Uh, maybe he turns off the GPS, but he still doesn't think about the fact that because there's this building in the background here, that actually if there's an image somewhere else online in which has been geotagged, um, that geotag can be propagated to his picture. It's just like having um, the GPS on. That building acts as a kind of a QR code um, for search-based approaches and it allows us to know exactly where where he is. So this is this is obviously a, a privacy violation. We count on being able to turn off our GPS and people not knowing. Okay, but then you can say, hey, well the guy's on vacation, you know, he wants everybody, all his friends to know he's in San Francisco, so no big deal, right? Well, okay, maybe. Um, but you have the problem then of what's called cyber casing. And 
So if you look at this, the people are posting their video online. This is first day of beach vacation. Okay, so, you know, goes online. We want all our friends to know first day of beach vacation. But right if you have a web crawler, however, you can at large scale mine the internet for pairs of... Um, of 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 uh, of information sources about people who have valuable things in their in their home, um, and people who are on vacation located here, right? And if you can find these pairs, if you can mine millions and millions of users and find these pairs, um, then you can you know launch a real world attack, namely break into these people's home and 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 steal the um, the painting. And this is the cyber casing attack that Gerald Freeland and and his uh, collaborators have described in great detail. Okay, and this is what we're interested in pixel privacy and pre preventing. We want to take um, this image, basically. Um, this year in pixel privacy, we're actually not looking at geolocation. We're looking at scene class. So we want to be able to take this, um, this picture or this video and change it in such a way that the computer will no longer recognize this as a beach. Right? It's fine if people look at it and say that, oh, that's a, uh, that's a beach, um, but <laughs> this is brilliant for the, the obfuscation, uh <laughs> the obfuscation happening. Okay, and just, to <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> um, but I, I I think it. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be solved by um, by uh, moving the uh, presentations to the laptop, right? Because as we learned this morning, it will be a recurring problem. Okay. So then, um, right, right, right. Okay. So then, uh, previously there was a visual privacy task at Medieval that some of you probably remember, and there they tried to obscure information from the point of view of the human user, and we're trying to obscure it from the point of view of the algorithm. So just keep that in mind. So protecting privacy is a problem, so we want to do this, but how many people encrypt their email? Everybody knows that, great, okay, one, <laughs> one person out of all, everybody knows we should be doing this, but somehow the incentive to do this is, is lacking. Um, so together with, um, with, with Jay Young Choi, we uh, wrote a paper at ICMR in 2017 where we investigated um, the potential of things that people do anyway to their images before putting them online, and they investigated the potential of these things um, to block inference, okay, to protect privacy. So here we're fooling around with Instagram filters, and here's a couple of Instagram filters um, that if you apply them, um, these images can no longer be geolocated. Okay, it's no longer clear that this is in San Francisco. Okay, and then somebody said to me, yeah, Martha, that's a really nice Instagram, but who's gonna actually apply that Instagram filter to the image? And we could only block about 10% of the ones that could be identified. So 10% is not enough. This looks, doesn't look nice. So we started Pixel Privacy to see if we could drive this idea um, really into a workable system. Okay, and so basically the task goal is that we want to increase image appeal. Okay, we don't want to do something that ruins the image. We want to incentivize users to use our, our image enhancements because they look cool. And at the same time, those very cool looking image enhancements um, should block the automatic inference of sensitive information. And here we're concentrating on scenes. So the computer cannot tell it's a beach, right? And our evaluation criteria is twofold. First of all, we look at the percentage of images whose location categories can no longer be inferred um, by the attack algorithm, um, which in our case is the ResNet classifier trained on the training set of the PLACES 365 standard data set. Um, okay, so we're trying to protect against in, in inference from specifically that algorithm. Um, and also the appeal is the degree to which the images um, are actually enhanced from the point of view of users. So the novelty of what we're doing. Well, okay, um, we combine work on adversarial examples um, that block inference, but also on image enhancement. These two things have been studied separately, and we're putting them together to make this um, pixel privacy, which is cool, um, but also um, helps to protect um, your images. And well, which classes did we choose? We sat down, we defined some privacy criteria, and then we chose from the PLACES 365 standard data set um, those class labels that are associated sort of with these high-level types of, um, 
of um, uh, of of scenes. Okay, for example, you know, at home or places related to religion, like churches and mosques. If you're in the hospital, if you're in a bar, if you're so like this. Okay, so I won't go into that in depth, but that's how that's the class labels that we're trying to protect. So here's bedroom. Um, so basically, we want to try to protect these bedroom images so that the computer no longer knows that they're that, that that's uh, actually taken in the bedroom. Um, okay, so then one thing you can do is use these um, uh, universal adversarial um, perturbations, um, which Zuran is going to be talking about uh, more. Basically, it's a um, it's one single um, one single perturbation um, image, and if you combine that with any um, input image, um, so that image is a thresher actually um, combined with this. The classifier will now say it's a Labrador, so a type of dog. Same thing, a flagpole gets mapped to also to a Labrador, like this. So this is the universal adversarial perturbation. Um, problem is, is that um, it doesn't look good, right? And also you're not incentivized to use it at all. Um, so then uh, we looked at style transfer, which is um, designed to look cool but doesn't protect. Um, so here, basically, um, this is a style transfer method called cartoon gain. Has or uh, now I'm pronouncing gone like it's a French word. <laughs> cartoon gone. <laughs> Sorry, too many nasals lately. Um, cartoon gone. How many people have heard? Anybody have heard of cartoon gone? Yeah, yeah. So you can you can take an original image and then you combine it with the style of a um of a of a famous cartoonist and you get a a cartoonized. Uh, um, image and um, I think uh, Sharon is going to be talking more about this later. But we ran kind of an organizer's baseline here, and it showed that if you just use this cartoon gun, you can actually prevent 60% of the images um, that previously could be um, uh, that previously could have their class identified. You could pre prevent um, inference for those images. Um, okay, so that means that we had a protection score of about 60%. Our appeal for this uh, organizer baseline, we didn't check it explicitly, but we just sort of said, okay, this is already interesting because Cartoon Gun was um, basically designed to have appeal. So we have good hope that um, you know users will like this. So Outlook. Okay, so there's probably there's a lot of outlook for this for this task. So one of the hardest questions was, well, what is appeal? And we'll hear a little bit of like about that um, from Simon now. Um, and can we protect other kinds of sensitive information in image, I in images and videos? Um, and then a very important one. So you notice that I said that there's one attack algorithm. You know this particular. Um, ResNet with particular training data. Can we protect against other attacks, against generic attacks? And if you think about it, when you ha when you have an attack, an attack in this case means um, uh, you're inferring the class of an image. You're attacking an image by inferring that it's a beach when you shouldn't be able to do that. It depends on what is sort of your negative classes, what's in your background collection. Um, the, the ease of that attack, it depends on this. Can we keep up in an arms race? Um, you know, like privacy and security problems, this one is set up like we do this, they do that, we do this. We ca can we actually have a chance to keep up? And finally, I think the larger driving motivation behind this is that if you, if you look at our community, our multimedia community, a lot of people are working on detection. Right? A lot of people are working on extracting more information from images. And this kind of research is very important, obviously. I mean, we've, we've we heard a lot about this, but we want to kind of balance that by also encouraging people to work on protection. Okay? So we should be able to put images out there without having you know, any kind of large-scale image mining be able to find us. Um, you know, people can look at them, but I should be able to publish an image which a computer then can't analyze. So that's kind of the larger driving vision. Uh, okay, so then um, we can. Um, are, are, there, are there any 